Uh, beware of promises made five Miller Lights deep at the bar late at night. <laughs> You'll wake up the next morning with a cannot-do-this hangover that you'll never forget. I've done it, and you've done it. I'm going to quit my job and be a musician. <laughs> Folding laundry five years ago, Seamus and I instigated what's now, five years later, the Jamaica Plain Music Festival. What is it about the idea, about this dream, that allowed us to walk the walk and not just have cheap talk about it? What is it about us? But primarily, what, it, what kind of cliff can you jump off of and land on your feet, witness TEDx Jamaica Plain? <laughs> I'm going to open my own business. I have a great idea for an invention. I'm going to be a billionaire. I'm going to change the world. It becomes background noise, you hear it so often. You smile and nod politely, and after the smoke clears, the pipe dream is gone. But every once in a while, an idea comes along, and a light bulb goes off. It sparks something. You say, not only can I do this, I have to do this. There are a couple of things maybe you already know. One is, shoot the moon not alone. Find other people with skill sets that are not yours that can bring to the table something that will realize your project. Number two, and you've heard this as well, it needs to be larger than yourself. That way, there'll be a foot in your back when you want to give up. And lastly, as Ferris Mueller might have said, <laughs> I'm not sure, <laughs> it's incredible what you can get done if no one cares about taking the credit. My first thought when we had this idea was, we're going to need some help. We got a group of people together with widely varying talents. Artists, musicians, promoters, marketing people, a CPA, attorney, all came together to give their time and experience, not only because they believed in this idea, but for some reason they believed in us. And when you have that kind of responsibility, you realize it's something you have to do. You don't really have a choice anymore. It becomes bigger than yourself. Be ready to improvise. I think there's no how to make your dream come true for dummies that you can read anymore. And as a parent, as you walk into the unknown, anyone can tell you how to raise your kids. That's up to you. So I, I believe that having a crazy life <laughs> is an education, an, edu an experience that you can stand on, shoulders that you can stand on. Seamus has had at least 40 jobs in 10 years. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> And I've started and lost at least 10 bands in 40 years. But somehow, when you tiptoe into the quicksand, a rope gets thrown by a friend or somewhere in your being that allows you to solve a problem. For every problem, there is a solution. So uh, you just pull it out of... <laughs> Always look like you know what you're doing, even if you don't. That's my secret. You're going to be putting out fires left and right. You have to improvise. You're going to learn a lot of new skills quickly. When we came up with this idea five years ago, I had no idea that I would be an expert in permitting and fire code <laughs> for putting on a concert. But these things happen. Yes. <laughs> you have to be adaptable. You have to be the first person there in the morning setting it up, and you have to be the person there at the end of the day picking up the garbage off the ground. That's how you can make your dream come true. I would also add that um, you can lose interest. There's an atrophy of enthusiasm that can set in. We all love the first kiss, the first apartment away from our family, the first job that we can't stand but, but duck it out. You know, um, We knew as soon as we started this thing, it was not a one and done, that it was become a tradition, very much like Femke Rosenbaum's Walk Around the Pond or Wake Up the Earth Festival. We knew we were stuck with this thing as much as we loved it. And it's interesting because no one is indispensable. If you have a John Stewart moment and you can't give 150% any longer, you'll know it and your friends will know it, but the thing is so large that you continue or someone steps into your shoes and moves along. 
And lastly, I would say that it took us almost a year to realize in one day something we worked on that whole length of time with our friends and with the community. So uh, beware of uh, the Bill Clinton interview. At the end, of uh, he won the presidency in 92, and he was asked, what's the number one thing as president you want to, to, to do? And he said, well, after several rights, it would be delayed gratification. But well, we all know how that turned out. <laughs> but we, we learned that ourselves. We live in a short attention span world. Everything is right now. We want everything right now, and we want it right in front of us. And we want to be entertained. And if we don't like what we see, we want something else immediately. So our task was, we're going to make this one day. How do we keep it within our original vision of music and still keep everyone entertained the entire time? That's where the idea of two stages came from. 21 bands, two stages in front of you, 15 to 20 minute sets each. Everybody said, you're crazy. That's a crazy idea. But there are so many different types of music here that if you don't like something, wait 15 or 20 minutes, something else is happening immediately. That's how we were able to get it done. A side benefit is that when you include more than yourselves, I mean, it's one thing to have a dream, I'm going to paint a picture in my bedroom for my best friend. And that's kind of small ego driven. This is much larger. And when it's your community, as Edith was talking about, then it's so beautiful when you see the result in one day out on the field of all this happiness and all these children and all this music. It's a great thing in JP. JP is different. I think we all know that. It's people of all walks of life, backgrounds, ethnicities, education levels, income levels come together to make this community what it is. And we're proud of that, and we want to show it off. And that's the number one reason why I believe we were so successful in doing what we did. Everyone just wants to come together just for a minute to celebrate a little bit of what we are. Uh, to finish up, you'll be scared. You better be scared. If you're not, it's too easy. Number two, you know, I think when you jump off the cliff and you just see all that open space in front of you, you're terrified, but suddenly you are flying. It's like Dumbo with that crow feather in its trunk. It was a placebo, but he suddenly was hovering there, bloated with fear, and down below was the most beautiful sight, the most vivid, the most alive experience he could possibly have imagined. I just want to finish with another Bubba type quote. It's the end of the War Room documentary and the Raging Cajun is telling everybody that worked on the campaign. He said, you know, sometimes you can give your labor to a project and sometimes you can give your love, but on very rare and lucky occasions, you can give your love and your labor at the same time and it will change your life forever. It changed ours. Thank you. Thank you.